Hello and God bless you. Today is the uh, Tuesday of the 25th week of Ordinary Time. And I'm sorry this reflection is a little bit later today. Uh, I had a Tuesday that was not the typical Tuesday I'm used to. So my, my apologies for the delay here. But we now begin to enter with the first reading into some of the wisdom literature that is in the Bible. And these are found in books like the Psalms. There's an actual book called the Book of Wisdom, the Book of Proverbs, the Book of Ecclesiastes, the Book of Sirach. And so these are books that are compilations of wise counsels on how to walk in the way of the Lord's commandments, to walk in the path of righteousness, but also counsels about uh, avoiding the way of the wicked and not to walk in those ways. So, in today's first reading, we do have the book of Proverbs, chapter 21. And if ever you find yourself in a moment of prayer where you are struggling to pray, and let's say you're you're trying to pray with the scriptures and where you are in the Bible isn't resonating. You're not finding something that is striking your heart. Well, in the, in the wisdom books, there is something in every chapter that can easily resonate with our life, with our daily life. And so if you're ever struggling with your prayer, open up one of the books, uh, these wisdom books, like the book of Proverbs, and just start reading until you find one of the counsels that you resonate with, that is speaking to something that you are experiencing, that might be a light to guide you through something that is rather hard, either relationally or with work or whatever it might be. And so I was praying with this passage that we have this morning, and here's what struck me in this passage from the book of Proverbs. All the ways of a man may be right in his own eyes, but it is the Lord who proves hearts. And there's another line right below that one. To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. So let's take that first one. All the ways of a man may be right in his own eyes, but it is the Lord who proves hearts. As I pondered this, and of course this is what we are invited to do when we read these wise counsels. In fact, it actually says in the first psalm, Blessed is the one who ponders the law of the Lord day and day and night. We don't just want to skim across them. When we find one of the pearls of wisdom in these books, we are to ponder it deeply. Put the book down, and as the Webster Dictionary defines pondering, to think through something deeply and thoroughly, and so that it becomes your own that your bones can soak it in. And then whenever you need that wisdom, it's right there. It's right there for you in your storehouse of wisdom. So as I was pondering, all the ways of a man may be right in his own eyes, but it is the Lord who proves hearts. None of us can presume that we are perfectly acceptable to God. There are always faults that are hidden from us. There are faults that we do not see. 
And therefore, this is an invitation to be humble before the Lord and to realize how much we depend on God's mercy. And there's a beautiful line in, an, in one of the other wisdom books that says, Lord, cleanse me from my hidden faults. In other words, cleanse me from the things I do not yet see. And so this counsel is an invitation to walk humbly before the Lord and not to presume perfect innocence. Just because I don't see anything doesn't mean there aren't things that need to be purified. Hidden sins and weaknesses that yet need to be disclosed. But now here's where we need to trust the Lord. So I trust the Lord's mercy with the faults and the sins that I do see. And I bring those to the Lord's mercy for forgiveness and for the grace that I need to rise and make progress in the way of gospel virtues. But we also need to trust the Lord's mercy to prepare us when we are ready to see other things that are yet hidden. All right? So this is why when we come to confession, you know, we don't come to confession to justify ourselves. You know, sometimes we hear in the confessional, you know, people saying, well, Father, I'm really a good person. Well, but that's, that's not why you come to confession. <laughs> that, that's true. You know, we are all good in God, God's eyes because we're made in His image. But we come to confession to confess, to confess our failures in love and all the different ways of love, whether it's patience or kindness, apologizing when I've hurt someone, struggling to, uh, to bear with the faults of others, you know, getting angry, getting jealous or envious, okay? So, when we come to confession, we just humbly confess the things that we're aware of. And we trust in the mercy of God to help us with those things. But then we also, sometimes you'll hear this in confession, and for all the sins I cannot remember or for the things I do not see. All right, this is a common practice in our Catholic tradition. And so that's one of the counsels. Okay, and that's enough on that one. And then to do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. This ties in with a wisdom that we see throughout the scriptures where it talks about how obedience is better than sacrifice. All right, it is, it is better to, to live out the commands of God and do the things of righteousness than to come and worship God while I'm living a life that is not obedient. I'm not living according to the commandments of God. All right, I'm stealing. I'm, I'm lusting after another person's wife. All right, I'm not doing anything with my anger and, and everyone around me is walking on eggshells. I'm not honoring my father and mother. All right, I'm, I'm using God's name in vain and I'm not doing anything about any of those things and yet I come to worship God. All right, God is saying, I would rather you put into practice in obedience the commandments that I have taught you. Offer to me the sacrifice of a righteous life, of charity, rather than coming to worship and not doing anything to grow in the love of God or the love of neighbor. So that's a beautiful, uh, beautiful wisdom uh, line. 
to do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. But now if we are living the, the laws of God and the precepts of the gospel, and then we come to worship the Lord, then our worship and our life are aligned. They're speaking the same thing. That sacrifice of worship is certainly pleasing to God, but not, not the one that is offered in a life of disobedience, where we're not trying to do anything to grow in the virtues and the gospel way. So there we go. That's just a couple of examples of how we can pray with the wisdom books, the, the wise counsels that we find in those books. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.